Welcome to another installation of Victory of the Light Radio Show, a special pre-recorded show with Cobra on August 26th, 2014. We have a wonderful interview coming up, and I wanted to remind you all I have a website called WWW The Promise Revealed, which some of you are on right now because you have listened to this interview on this page. We have many wonderful information, healing products, and things you can check out here. We do appreciate the support very much. We work very hard. I also want to remind you all we do have a website called www.prepareforchange.net. Cobra and I strongly support and have worked on to bring you information about the event. To remind all of you, many of you have asked many questions that have been answered before here. I apologize if your questions weren't answered. Some people want to know who Cobra is. He never reveals himself. Some people want to know what happens at the event. Please go to prepareforchange.net, study this, and I apologize if your questions weren't answered. I want to thank you all for the wonderful messages of love and support I've received in regards to my health and turnaround. I've put out a blog with a positive nature, sharing I've turned some things around. So that's great news. And I also want to thank all of you who have uh, thanked Cobra and I for our work and the effort we're doing. We'd like you to continue to support the ideas and mission by learning and growing and sharing as much unconditional love, forgiveness, and peace as you can and sharing the good news of the spiritual inevitable transformation of this planet and the revelation of our space family and what that means for us on earth. I do have some seats available at the Mount Shasta Ascension Portal Conference with James Gilliland, Byron Belitzos, myself, Robert Perala, Michael L. Legion, Alfred Lambermont Weber, Andrew Basago, and Trisha McCannon also is going to be there. We're meeting on the 12th through 14th, and you can find that on my website, The Promise Revealed. There's a banner that clicks up on the homepage if you haven't been there yet. You can sign up for my email and blog. You can click on that and read all the information about the uh, conference coming up. I want to thank all the people who uh, help out here. Ricky Serafico has been uh, instrumental and invaluable in this process. Danelle Glade, the silent backbone of the transcription process for PFC, always a supporter, always there. Thank you so much as well as Smalley, who does our videos. Thank you so much, folks. And uh, now get ready for the interview with Cobra coming right up. Okay, folks, as promised, we do have Cobra on the line here, and we're ready for a great interview today. We have uh, a lot of repeat questions this month, and it's one actually I've been meaning to address with you, Cobra. It's about karma. I have uh, a couple things I'm going to clarify with that in my reservations, and we spoke about this, and I wanted to share this with people. We did receive a lot of questions here. Uh, in regards to karma, it has been uh, shared through many different world religions, uh, the nature of cause and effect. It's like gravity. It does happen. We are light beings. We send out our thoughts and they return to us. Um, uh, in a certain level, we have to experience things. And you have clarified that, and Dr. Frank Strange is also has supported you in this, as well as Omnek Omnek, the woman from Venus, who was in the astral world, and to clear up her karma uh, and have her last lifetime on Earth, she chose to come here. And um, I'm going to be sharing a lot of her teachings in my Mount Shasta conference, but I wanted to read to you uh, what she says about karma. Karma is perhaps often misunderstood. Many regard karma as a punishment for past and present deeds. In reality, karma can be positive or difficult experiences. Karma can also be rewards for positive deeds and actions. It all depends on the individual soul. The awareness, the experiences, and the responsibilities of each particular soul. The more one is aware and more responsible one becomes towards one's actions and relations is has a lot to do for the amount of karma one accumulates, whether it be negative or positive. And the other thing she says here is um, that karma is not only accumulated in the physical, but other dimensions as well. Would you agree to a certain extent about that understanding of karma. We had a talk before and you said, well, it's not necessarily a punishment, which she has just reinforced. Can you expound more deeply on that? Okay. Um, I do not agree with the notion that karma is a system of punishment. 
Actually, I don't like to use that word because it is so charged and it was actually greatly misused by the Archons who actually installed the punishment uh, system on the planet, uh, on the spiritual planes and on the physical plane. So I would just simply say there is a law of manifestation. And if you have uh, negative actions, you will tend to attract more of negative actions in the future. I would not even call it a law of cause and effect because there are many factors which determine what will be manifested. But I would simply say that if you focus on the positive, you tend to manifest more of the positive. And if you focus on the negative in your uh, thoughts and emotions and actions, you tend to manifest more of the negative. And there is no punishment involved in this. There is no reward or punishment system involved with this. Uh, but the Archons have manipulated and misused that fact by distorting it and by actually creating a punishment system on the astral plane, uh, also on the physical plane. So I would never use that word because it's so charged and it has been so misused. Yes, maybe you, you heard me, but I was saying that it is not a punishment system. But the vibration of the experience, if you were like me, I can often be judgmental and impatient and um that type of energy that I put out can come back to me, and it's a lesson, it's an opportunity to grow into compassion and understanding as the same vibration that I attracted to myself results in me. It's a learning experience. That's what I meant. Would you agree with that? I would not even agree with that. I would not say that planet Earth is a school or it is a learning experience. Uh, I would say that there are much better ways to, to grow and to learn than to have negative experiences mirrored back to you because it's a closed loop system. So anywhere else in the universe, if you would have a negative thought, uh, you would receive healing and most people would be open to that healing and would heal. Uh, so I would say that all, this, all those concepts have been misused to, to make people believe uh, to support the recycling system, the reincarnation system, but they have something to learn here. It is not true. I do not agree with that. I'm going to have to uh, disagree with you on that because uh, my understanding and my teachings and from all of the information that I have felt and understood and intuited and uh, from my own experience, I, I don't see it as a punishment system. I, I see it as the result of, yes, cause and effect. Reincarnation is a is a fact and it's accepted on all worlds. Uh, the, the material worlds have always had these problems and there have been some new developments, as you said, that have been reinforced by some of the information that I've been getting from uh, the Venusians um, in regards to the nature of the various planes. Um, I wanted to, I guess, I, I can ask you some questions here. Uh, does the Earth have an astral plane that is separate from the Venusian or the Pleiadian astral plane? Yes, uh, each planet has a physical body and also has the etheric body and it has the astral body. And the astral body of a planet is very much connected with the life forms that are inhabiting the planet. So planet Earth has an astral body which is directly connected with humanity and other life forms on the planet and is of course different than the astral body of the Pleiadian star system. Okay, thank you for that answer. Would you agree that we are souls and that we descend and we begin, uh, go through a process, and the soul's process and purpose in life is to go through a, a continual process of ascension, which starts as a mineral, uh, moves towards vegetable life over extended millions of years and many different worlds experiencing uh, feelings and emotions and then moves into an animal life existence and has a extremely long experience there many millions of years and then the soul becomes a physical being would you agree with that uh, this is one possible course of evolution and the star uh, people on this planet did not go through that process actually uh, the star people on this planet went through a different process when they emerged from the central sun went through the angelic evolution and then descended through dimensions into the physicality. Uh, but yes, most humanity on the planet went through uh, mineral phase, uh, went through the um, vegetable phase and went through the animal phase through millions of years. 
So we have two streams of evolution here, which are now interacting and integrating each other. Okay. Um, the other thing I would like to ask you, kind of along the same lines here, would you agree that we, our soul body, uh, takes on various sheaths or bodies to experience the physical plane. I mean, my feeling is, is what is the purpose of creation uh, on all different planes is, is to support life, whichever life it is on that plane. And I feel uh, from my intuition and experience and understanding of my soul travels that we are uh, constantly learning, evolving and growing. Uh, and that the I'm going to say in the past, because according to the teachings that you're giving and some other people that I've had more clarification on now, indicate that there's drastic changes taking place. So after billions of years, all the universes are changing and there's a, a new vibration that is shifting the positive and the negative worlds in a completely radical and different transformation of process. Would you um, agree that we become co-creators as divine spirit sparks as drops in the ocean of the infinite our individual expressions are co-creators with the supreme deity um yes i would agree with that okay the other thing i wanted you to comment before we go into the other people's questions are i was going to give you the seven laws that were given to me recently uh, through the omnek omnek information um the seven basic laws uh, these are the divine laws, uh, and uh, they maintain that these are known on all worlds and that the science of soul travel is understood and that the uh, spiritual process of soul travel is a technique used on all worlds to allow each individual soul to have their own experiences. But here are the seven basic laws from Venus and then the seven divine laws. Uh, I would like your comment on these after the we give each seven know ourselves to be part of the creator be thankful for experiencing of existing not to judge but accept all beings to know we have existed in all living forms and fulfill our responsibilities in each life cycle obey the laws of nature in the societies in which we exist and to learn from mistakes so as not to repeat old lessons does that sound good I would say that each person needs to find the answer to that question by themselves and go inside and just feel uh, within if this resonates with you. Okay. I'll just give the seven divine laws. Love all living creations. Use our energy to support our worlds. Share knowledge and wisdom. Understand the equality of all souls. Never use power to manipulate or control. Know the soul is immortal and give thanks to the one divine being daily. Those are the, um, the rules that they go from uh, on Venus. So the questions we had about karma were many, but I'm going to go into the questions now. We'll just start running through them from the other individuals. How much do you foresee human behavior, thoughts, and speech improving as soon as the scalar wave technology and implants are removed after the event? Uh, yes, uh, when the scalar technology is removed, I expect drastic improvement in human behavior because that technology is one of the main factors why people are acting strange. Right now, do you feel human behavior is more influenced by archonic technology itself or is it due to an autopilot mental programming that's persisted for so long and the negative habits have become so ingrained in humans? that the scalar technology is not that influential. It is very influential because uh, when the technology is removed, uh, the light can come in and begin to disintegrate uh, all mind programming because mind programming can only be maintained with constant entropy, with constant bombardment with negativity. So when the negativity is removed, programming automatically begins to dissolve. Okay. The Carlini Institute has tracked the effect of intense solar flares and coronal mass ejections on the human body for several years. These symptoms coincide succinctly with the timing of solar flares and include strong feelings of electricity, running through the body, extreme weakness and fatigue, pulsations in the head, anxiety, racing heart, fever, flu-like symptoms, etc. Do you have any information you can share about solar flares 
And are there other factors you could mention that may be causing these symptoms, which is a newer phenomenon in these recent years? Okay, there are many factors causing this. Uh, one of them is the solar flares, but it's not the only one. Actually, uh, solar activity is very strongly correlated with the uh, galactic central sun activity, which is also increasing. And of course, many of those phenomena have nothing to do with solar flares or galactic activity, but are mostly created by scalar technology. Scalar technology can create very strange sensations in the body. Okay, thank you. We had the compression breakthrough compressing the light now to, uh, I think it's uh, 100 yards or 300 feet from the top of the surface of the planet to below the planet now. We had many, many, many astral parasites. We seem to move very quickly from the, uh, I think it was nine mile limit uh, down to this. Where are we at with the astral parasites? N not the individual archons that are hiding, but where are we at with them right now? Are those mostly removed? Have we gotten a, a tremendous uh, improvement now that they've been compressed? So in a small area, is it easier? Are they gone? Oh, uh, yes, there has been uh, quite dramatic progress regarding astral parasites. They're almost gone. So this is not the main problem anymore regarding the non-physical influence. Okay, on, as a side note, um, I sent you a picture. One person sent me some pictures. They looked like uh, some kind of just normal biological Earth entities, but I would like your comment. Did those look like astral parasites to you? Did you see those? No, no, I've seen the pictures, and they look like physical uh, biological entities. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, next question. If they're so desperate and unmanageable. What is stopping the Chimera from detonating the Stranglet Bonds? Why haven't they done this yet? Because they will destroy them as well, and they want to survive. Okay. What is the connection between the revaluation of the Iraqi dinar along with the global currency reset and the event itself? Is it possible that one can precede the other? Okay, there is much talk about this so-called revaluation, and I would repeat again, it is extremely unlikely that this will happen before the event, and there is a very simple reason for this. The worldwide financial system is connected through supercomputers, through a network. It's a closed network. It's not an open network like the Internet. It's a closed network. And the cabal, or shall we say more precisely, the uh, Chimera group, they control that network. And until the cabal is removed, uh, the revaluation cannot happen because it has to happen through the banking system. And uh, it's extremely unlikely that uh, this network will be in the hands of the light forces before the event, because, of course, the cabal will not retaliate, and it's not a good idea. Right. Uh, but it is possible we spoke about that. It's extremely remotely, uh, it's extremely small chance. I actually uh, spoke with uh, someone, uh, I can't talk about them, of course, they're uh, very closely associated with someone at upper levels of the revaluation in Reno and attempting to get this done. And they actually are thinking it's possible that things are set. And I personally have to agree with you. I don't really see that taking place. I asked them today if one currency could happen before another, like just one to see how it goes and what the results would be. And um, they felt it had to be all at once, which uh, reinforces my feelings that it will take the event to make it happen. Yeah, this is the only safe way to make it happen. The only balanced way to make it happen. Yeah, and I have a feeling we're much farther away than people think on that, but uh, that's just my, <laughs> of course, kind of never wanting to... Uh, get to my hopes up. Here's a, a series of questions we're going to go through. Is the RH bloodline, some people claim the Holy Grail, is it traced back to Jesus? And if not, where does this bloodline originate from? Or is it a myth? Uh, I would say, uh, actually, there is a, I would say a positive 13th bloodline. And it also includes uh, the being which is, which is called Jesus on this planet, but also includes many other people. And the purpose of that bloodline is to bring light to the planet. And yes, it is uh, sometimes called the gray uh, bloodline. Right. What about uh, the RH negative, the, the most rare? I have that. It's AB negative. It's a completely different story. It has nothing to do with 
uh, holy grail or lineages? Okay, here's an interesting question. You know, I believe that, uh, you know, consciousness or, or soul comes from source and, and descends, but um, what star system and alien race is the birth of the humanoid race, or I guess what some people would call the Adam Cadman? Okay, uh, humanoid error type has evolved on many different places, not only uh, throughout this galaxy, but also other galaxies. So I would not say if there is a certain specific region that is the birthplace of a human race, it's, an, it's a universal archetype, which is actually a natural result of the laws of physics. This is the most convenient way for a physical body to function on the physical plane. Yeah, and it probably follows along the divine matrix of creation. Exactly. Very good. Okay. A redundant question here we've answered, but the 3D matrix is obviously flawed. Uh, how can a parasitic construct, which is fueled by energy harvesting, ever be rectified? We go back to the parasites and, and that type of thing. How is this going to happen? Okay, you have a matrix, which is actually, uh, on the one level, a computer program. And every computer program can be hacked. So all the technology, uh, all the devices, whatever the dark cobalt has, they have a weak spot. And those weak spots will be exploited and all the technology will be removed. And the cabal without technology are just human beings without any power. Okay. I would like to ask another question along these lines. What is the situation with the major archons? Have we had some major influential black nobility or high-level cabal members been removed lately? In the last few months, not many, but the ones who are existing are losing their power drastically. So uh, all the Jesuits and the black nobility families, they are losing their power quite fast. They're losing their support base even amongst their minions, huh? Uh, also, yes. But I would say on the highest level, they are not uh, having the power they had before, even half a year ago. They had much more power. Okay, very good. Uh, here's a question. Why do we circle clockwise during planetary liberation meditation exercise? Some people want to know why we go clockwise. You, you circle clockwise in the liberation meditation. Why do you circle clockwise or not counterclockwise? Uh, this is the direction of manifestation. So we are manifesting liberation on the planet. Very good. Why do we pronounce E and E A? Ah? How did you get the information? It is actually pronounced E A. E A. Yes. Okay. Why do we do that? This is actually creating an energy vortex which dissolves the very structure of duality, dissolves the structure of quantum anomaly on the planet. Okay. Now, one person says, I've heard and read that humans from other planets have physical bodies. They do not age, do not get ill, and live much longer. And it's actually on each plane, the body to them has a physicality to it, doesn't it? It's actually a lighter vibration than ours on each different planet, depending on the plane, whether they're manifest on the astral planet or a mental plane or a higher plane. They actually have physical bodies like we do, don't they? It depends on the situation, but yes, there are many planets where they have physical life and there are many human forms on those planets as well. But when they go to astral, they also have the same body. It's just a light body, correct? It's not the same body. The astral body is a little bit different shape. It has a humanoid shape, but there is an, an oval of light around it. Yes, yes. So it's a little bit different. Good, exactly. That's what I was thinking. And the other question here is, I thought after the ascension, we can also experience the higher light body. Why do we have to get rid of our physical body? You don't get rid of the physical body, you transcend it. At a certain point, your consciousness integrates everything you need to integrate in this dimension, and then you don't need the physical body anymore. Of course, after your ascension, you can still create a physical body, but you will not be incarnated into the body. It will be just a holographic projection. Yeah, Omnek Omnek described life on Venus where they actually, uh, everything is manifested by thought and there's a very strict protocol of teaching how to manifest and how to create if they want to make a carpet look like tile and feel like grass, they can do it. And they also have the social gatherings where they often will appear as famous people in history from various worlds. And um, it's the, the challenge of the other guests to figure out who the person is behind their manifested disguises. 
that's pretty uh, interesting there. Here it says, in your recent post, The Fall of Shemera, you explained that Shemera were the master rogue group that enslaved the quarantined earth and that they enslaved the reptilians and draco beings. Can you tell us anything about these reptilians and dracos were like prior to coming to earth? They were in many places in this galaxy. Even this planet had a genuine uh, reptilian and draco population uh, below the surface of the planet. And there were also many other star systems in the Orion constellation, many star systems in the Draco constellation, and some other constellations. It was quite a, a widespread life form in this sector of the galaxy. So they actually lived as conscious beings uh, beneath the surface of the planet here, from origin from this planet, or? Uh, yes, some of them. Some of them are genuine Earth-based reptilians. Were they already hostile to human beings on the surface, or was their DNA and altered and scalar wave technology used to make them tools of the Chimera group? They were hostile, but not as hostile. They were made more hostile because that aspect of their nature was supported, and the positive aspect of their nature was not supported. Why were they separated from us underground? I mean, why didn't they evolve along the lines, and why didn't they stay on the surface with us and we just would accept them as another uh, life being like on other planets. They were removed from the surface uh, when they became dangerous to destroy humanity on the surface. Oh, who removed them? Other races, actually, there were many, I would say, genetic experiments in Atlantis, and uh, some of them went quite far, too far, and some of them actually involved the reptilian race, and it became dangerous. So there was actually some of the cataclysms in our history actually removed the reptilian race from the surface. Okay. Here's a question that Omnic Omnic answers is, if Ascension is about going to another dimension, what happens to all the beautiful technologies and buildings? If afterwards anything, everything vanishes. And according to Omnic Omnic, when Venus became astral, they went through the same cycles that we did in physicality. She says that the planet just gradually, over a period of time, became an astral world. Would you agree with that? Yes, that's a far advanced stage of uh, evolution of a civilization. Humanity is far from that. Yeah, our entire civilization will not be advancing to the astral dimension. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. So what is the transformation. Uh, everyone talks about 4D and 5D. That type of planetary ascension is a long way off, but there is going to be a drastic improvement on the physical plane? Not only there will be drastic improvement on the physical plane, but there will be, I would say, different paths of evolution open because we have people on various stages of development on this planet right now, and some of them will be accelerated drastically, and the masses will also receive a quantum leap in their consciousness, but their end destination will be a little bit different. Um, here's a question. What is the moon and why does it not spin? The moon is rotating around the Earth and it's a natural satellite of planet Earth. Why doesn't it spin? Why do we always see the same side? Because its rotation is synchronized with planet Earth. Okay, according to uh, some sources, the Earth was considered uninhabitable by the Galactic Federation because it only had one moon. They've indicated that either two moons or one moon is preferable for inhabitation due to the drastic emotional instability caused by a single moon. Would you agree with that? No, no. Actually, people have um, many ideas about the moon, but the moon is actually just amplifying the emotions which are already present and it can actually be a portal for the light okay i would agree with that i think it also uh can be a, it's clearly a, an amplification of negativity too um would you agree with that uh, i would say that it just triggers whatever has been suppressed and if people resist that process of clearing it can appear to be negative but if people go with the process and uh, are not enemies to their emotions, it will not increase negativity, it will purify it. Okay, I'll just give a, a caveat there that the moon's rotation does affect the serotonin levels in the blood and makes uh, the emotional feelings more intense. And for those who are not in control of their every thought and who are in emotional situations will find themselves their tension reaching a higher point. 
Here's a question, a little political. Why doesn't Putin officially reveal the true identity of the cabal in the media if he's a good guy? Why doesn't he back this up with the evidence and reveal the ET roles and start to break the quarantine? If he's changed his colors, uh, why isn't he a little more powerfully paddling on the side of the light? It is because he's a politician and all major politicians are still controlled by the cabal to a certain degree. The cabal could still remove him or even do worse. You know, the cabal could do many, I, I would say, if any significant public person would reveal extraterrestrial evidence or mm, take drastic actions against the cabal, that would trigger uh, drastic retaliations from the cabal towards the humanity. And I would say that there are elements in Russian military which are controlled by the Chimera group. And you know always that the military controls the president. And I would put here the negative aspect of the military, even in Russia, still controls the president to a certain degree. Is he uh, knowingly contacting any members of resistance, the planetary spiritual hierarchy, ascended masters, or is he just trying to maintain his power? He has been contacted by the light forces quite recently. He has received some intel and some guidance from them, uh, but he is trying to balance different forces. He's trying to uh, make this transition as easy as possible for the Russians. And his main motivation is to preserve the interests of the Russian nation and at the same moment to support the Eastern Alliance to a certain degree. Do you think his viewpoint has evolved to accept the whole transformation that's coming and the whole thing? Or do you see him as kind of trying to maintain his position and to kind of be that linchpin to the transition and uh, maintain his, you know, kind of power thing the way the cabal kind of runs? Or do you think he realizes the complete transformation that's coming that would change things? Is he completely on board? Is he, is he that high evolved? I would say he's 80% on board. Okay, thank you. It's said that some cabal members were removed from the planet. It would be logic to expect the family members or friends would notice those people are missing and seek out the media. Why didn't we hear about the missing persons for those cabal members you said that were offered asylum, that they didn't want to be in there? Uh, there are very few of them that have been removed from the planet. Very few. Okay, thank you. Can you comment on Edward Snowden? Is he a genuine... Uh, uh, whistleblower White Knight, or is he a disinfo? Does he know about the liberation and the resistance? Uh, he had a very positive role because he made the masses, human masses, realize the reality of NSA uh, spying programs, which is a very good thing. Uh, very good. Here's a great question. I love this one. Why is it so many people think they have been Cleopatra or, or Osiris in their past life? Do we just connect to memory, which is saved in the collective consciousness? Are they delusional? Are we all part of some giant soul family? What is that? It is simply, uh, I would say, a wish for human beings to be somebody great. It's just a wishful thinking on the astral plane. Very good. How can we bring together the oneness theory of the Archon theory? How can oneness and consciousness at the same time recognize the negative things and the good things that happen? Okay, actually, oneness is a source field. It's a consciousness field of everything positive, and it does not include a random function. It does not include the negativity itself. Uh, the negativity itself, it's a logical opposite of oneness, and both are existing. Yes, yeah, so that uh, goes along with my understanding as well that the Supreme Creator is completely perfect in itself and separate in a sense. At the same time, we are part and parcel of that divine. It's actually kind of like a paradox. Here's a question. For those who decided to come here in Atlantean times before the fall, did we want to have a good thing here created or did we want to help humanity evolve? We came here to liberate the planet. We saw what is happening here and we wanted to stop it. That's it. Are some members of soul families of the star seeds in light ships? You see, it's a huge soul family. It's a huge family of light. And yes, many of our members of our soul families are on the ships right now. Okay. Here's another question. If a decree has been made by the 
uh, higher powers, uh, the GFL, that no more nuclear blasts will be allowed in order to prevent de devastating damage to Gaia Earth. Why then aren't strangling bombs even a possible concern? Couldn't they be deactivated just as nuclear weapons have been? Or um, it, it's much more difficult. We talked about that before. But someone says it seems contradictory. Uh, it is not. It is simply that the nuclear uh, bomb is a very simple technology and the strange bomb is a little bit more sophisticated and it's not that easy to disarm. It's possible, but it takes time and it takes some other factors which are being taken care of right now. Okay. Another question here. There are many stories circulating for thousands of years that the attempt to explain the Earth's history and cause for confusion among the Earth's inhabitants is lost because of the quarantine and the misinformation from the cabal. Can you talk about the information that, or myth, that an archangel wanted to experience physical matter and was a cause of the anomaly of darkness? It seems oversimplified. Yeah, there is some truth in this story. Actually, there was an archangel which actually wanted to experience that anomaly, and he descended into that anomaly with very sophisticated technology, and that was the birth of the dark forces. But the anomaly was already here, yes. creating, you know, on the physical planes anyway, very challenging and difficult experiences, correct? Uh, the anomaly was already there, uh, but there was no intentional evil up to that point. Okay. So the intentional evil was created as an interaction between consciousness and that random function, that uh, potentiality. Okay. Was he of a particular star race? Um, that Archangel actually experienced many star systems and actually belonged to, he gathered experiences of many star races. Okay. Here's another question about death. And I understand for those who can travel in the astral plane and go to the worlds where people go when they die, it can be verified by the individual. But someone says they've read that the light tunnel that people see when they die or have a near-death experience is simply a soul catcher for the Archon's reincarnation factory. Is it possible to escape the reincarnation process by not following the supposedly loving light? Okay, I do not agree with that theory. I would say when uh, light is light and not light is not light. So if you follow the light, you will get into more light. It's not a trick. But yes, there are implantation stations on the etheric plane after you die. Yes, there are tricks being made. But if you follow your inner guidance where to go, you will most likely escape them. But you see, um, the surface layer on the planet, on the etheric plane, is in a scalar field. And it's very difficult to escape that scalar field. So people who die are actually trapped in that scalar field around the Earth. And uh, they usually go to the next incarnation within that scalar field. And that's in the lower astral plane, they don't escape it, is that correct? Well, now on the lower astral plane, it's easier than it was. It's possible to escape it, but you will have to transcend your inner attachments to the planetary surface. Okay. What are those humming sounds heard all over the planet? And this was more prevalent some time ago, but I have heard sounds. Are, are these legitimate videos? Uh, are these hoaxes? Or are there some sort of um, causes for these humming sounds? Uh, yes, uh, this sound is still happening. It's actually a combination. It was a very strong uh, etheric sound, but now uh, there is also a strong uh, plasma scalar technology which creates infrasound, which can be heard by human beings or even felt in the human body. There are low frequencies uh, between, I would say, 10 and 50 hertz, which can be heard by human ear. They can be felt as a low humming vibration in the body, which is usually unpleasant. Yes. Another question that's kind of related to that. Is hypersensitivity that many people are experiencing, is that due to the electronic matrix or its combination of things? Uh, it's a combination of natural sensitive of certain souls, which have to be sensitive to have certain channels open, but that sensitivity can be misused by technology of the archons. All those electronic plasma scalar devices can actually uh, distort that sensitivity in a way which is not comfortable. Okay. 
I guess I want to ask a question about the Dogon people, and there's been pictures of spaceships supposedly on cave walls with and stories of a spaceship coming down, hollowing out some uh, ground, putting in water, and uh, dolphins talking to humans. Is there any truth to that? Yes. Mm, that's right. It was visited by people from Sirius Star System a long time ago. And actually, there was a strong presence of Sirius population in Central and North Africa throughout the history. Okay, so this is not really a humanoid. It seems more like an animal. I understand that the dolphins are higher souls come here to, according to Sheldon Nidal, to weave uh, and connect the etheric matrix in the oceans and to heal the earth, dolphins and whales both. But they're not humanoid. But you're saying they actually exist as uh, conscious sentient beings like humanoids in what we would consider dolphin bodies? Uh, yes, you see, uh, in the Sirius star system, there are many uh, watery planets and many life forms have been evolved there. Some of them are humanoid, some of them look like dolphins, and some of them look like something in between. Okay. Do they exist exclusively in the water? Uh, some of them, yes. Some of them uh, have water as their natural habitat. Some of them are amphibious, and some of them are living on solid ground. It depends. There are a few uh, planets in that star system, and uh, they have different configuration, different ratio between water and uh, solid ground. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the Iargians are one of my favorite, and they did evolve from water. They talk about that. Has a resistance chosen you, or did you choose this task you have now? Uh, actually, I have been asked by the resistance to start the blog. It was not my idea. I have received some suggestions, and uh, I was not very happy about it because I felt it's too early, and they said, now is the time. Just go for it and start it. Okay. Yeah, things take a long time to grow. Are you personally pleased with the support from uh, your crew on the surface? Uh, I would say I'm extremely pleased by certain people. Some people have surprised me very positively, uh, but I would also need to say that many people have surprised me negatively because there is much less cooperation on the surface than I have expected. So this is one of the main reasons why this is taking so long. And uh, when I see all those dramas, I just cannot believe it. I know. What would you wish uh, further from the ground crew that we could create or do? Okay, I would wish that people begin to fight this fight together. If we want to liberate the planet, we have to cooperate. And I really mean that. We need to have a common vision and a common goal and start working together for this. Okay. In my opinion, and from what I understand, the reality that we exist in, the physical plane, is a manifestation of the collective level of consciousness of humanity. Humanity has been dumbed down, hats, sunglasses, and we continually look down. Um, would you agree that when humanity raises its spiritual consciousness and vibration, that the energies will be ripe for the event, and that on a certain level, people must adhere to the spiritual awakening just as much as learning about what's going on on the planet. Would you agree that it's a spiritual awakening process is very important as well? I would say that the spiritual awakening process for humanity is only possible after the event. And the event will happen when the technologies of the Chimera group are removed. Uh, the light forces are no longer waiting for humanity to wake up or for people to cooperate. Uh, that would, of course, make it easier the transition would be much uh, softer, but as it is now, when the technologies are removed, when all those factors are taken care of, they will just go for it. So you don't think that people's spiritual vibrational upliftment is that significant to creating change on the planet? You think that would be too slow with the levels that we have now? Is that what you're saying? Well, with the levels, if we would just wait for humanity, that would take decades or even centuries. So uh, there needs to be an intervention of the light forces from above this perspective to make the change happen. Of course, every individual is important. Every spiritual uh, growth that can be made is important to make this transition easier and faster. But on humans alone, uh, I would not say that humanity is in a state to be able to make this transition happen in a way that that would make it a good plan. Because I would say the level of cooperation even between the leading persons in the liberation movement is too low for 
any uh, coordinated action. So that coordinated action, the impulse will come from beyond the surface of the planet. And, uh, and only then I can see that human beings will be able to follow that impulse, that vision. And uh, when they see some concrete results, some concrete proof, then people will awaken. An average human being cannot awaken based on inner experience alone. They need concrete proof. They need evidence. And that evidence will be provided. I, I kind of disagree with that. I think that each individual, uh, through their own spiritual experience, could awaken that way. Are you saying that uh, there's no individual uh, spiritual awakening that can liberate someone without the event? It can, but I'm not expecting this to happen uh, on a massive scale uh, enough to create the event. I would say that the spiritual awakening on a massive scale will happen after the event when people will have the evidence and the light present uh, when the cabal will be removed and uh, when the spiritual growth will happen without those obstacles. I'm speaking now on a global scale. Of course, on an individual scale, your own individual awakening is up to you. But I'm speaking of the general psychological dynamic of humanity as a whole. Okay, thank you for that distinction. I wanted to make that clear. I had that feeling that was you meant. Here's a fun one. I like, because I love crystals, lasers, and scalar waves, which are going to be at my Mount Shasta conference. I have to say that we have a very cool system there. Cobra, what is the future of crystals in our lives? Okay, crystals are actually, I would say, the most highly evolved matter on the physical plane, and they can reflect higher consciousness. And uh, during the transitional period, uh, crystals will have a very important role in the awakening of the masses. Yes, the advanced healing technologies will be utilizing sound, light, and color frequencies uh, directed through the crystals, which will act as resonant uh, transducers. Would you agree with that? Uh, yes, yes. Of course, uh, similar technologies were used in Atlantis, similar technologies were used in many different star nations around the galaxy, and this will be slowly introduced, but on a much higher level than we have right now. Okay, um, this is a basic question, but this is for the people in South Africa. And this answer, folks, is on the websites for those of you who read. But we have many new listeners here who haven't been to prepareforchange.net, which you need to go to and read. You should buy uh, the book called The Event on Cobra or my site or Prepare for Change. This will give you a great background to what's going on here. But here's a, a good question you can answer that will, for the, a lot of the new people here. Can you tell us the main difference between the event and what the New World Order is planning to uh, bring? These two are completely opposite things. The event is a liberation of humanity. It's a removal of the cabal. It is the freedom of the people. It will give power to the people. The New World Order, everybody knows what that means. I don't need to repeat that. Okay. And it does seem that everyone is expecting the New World Order to uh, do something to get their big control. But it's we're deeply involved in it. We've been in the control for long enough, folks. It's time that it goes the other way. So don't expect any more big negative things. Although Benjamin Fulford and many people have been talking about some sort of cabal orchestrated plot in September. Do you have any information on this? Will this be thwarted this time? Is this being handled by the RM? You see, the Cabal has many plans for many false flags, for many different level of extinction events. None of this will work as they want. Uh, I would say now we're living the maximum entropy, the maximum uh, level of control is right now. So this is the maximum stage of New World Order ever on this planet. It can only get better, it cannot get worse. Is the universe infinite? I would say that the consciousness is infinite, but the material universe is uh, limited by the laws of physics in matter itself. I would agree with that. That was an answer that I was expecting. Thank you for that. Okay, here's a good question. Uh, this is an individual process, but how do we start developing the discernment of who we really are as sovereign individuals to differentiate from dark systems of control? Okay, uh, there is a lot of drama uh, around this sovereignty thing. It is not about you fighting the system. It is about you living in the cracks, in the matrix. 
So you don't need to challenge the system, you just exit the system and live uh, in the cracks when you are invisible, when you live in a different vibrational frequency than the system. Okay. I guess we're going to switch back to another question here. How will the credit system or the financial system work in the new system? You've said that the um, stock markets will close forever. Won't there be a lot of resistance from the general public on this type of thing? Is this Won't this kind of uh, put people into a, a drastic uh, fear-based money situation? Or are there plans, of course, to alleviate this and explain it all? Okay, uh the drastic fear situation will happen when the banks will close at the moment of the event. And of course, in that period, when the banks are closed, the general public will be informed through the mass media about the situation. They will be very happy when the collateral accounts will be given to humanity and when they receive more abundance. So they will not complain. Of course, a small percentage will complain, but there is always a certain percentage of people that will complain to almost everything. So it'll be made clear to people that um, their stocks and all that that they've had invested there will no longer be bringing dividends, but they will receive uh, a value for their money back, and they'll welcome that the new system based on that information. Exactly. Yes, yes. Okay, very good. Uh, does the story of Noah and the flood have anything to do with uh, reality or the sinking of Atlantis, or is that completely a myth? Uh, yes, it has to do much with reality because there were drastic floods in the Near East uh, uh, 5,000 years ago. And also, of course, there was a global cataclysm which destroyed Atlantis around uh, 11,500 years ago. Uh, was he contacted by higher dimensional beings to build an actual ark? Uh, something similar happened, yes, uh, but not just in one location. It was happening simultaneously in many locations around the planet. Okay, so that's the only record. There were many uh, similar type Noahs gathering different animals around the planet, correct? Yes. Okay. What's the difference between the higher self and the soul? Are they the same? Can you explain their functions? Basically, there are two expressions for the same thing. This is your own inner presence. It can be described as soul or higher self. It is the real you. Okay. Is it possible to be disconnected from the soul? Uh, it is possible, and this has actually happened uh, to some members of the Cabal. You mean when they're sent to the Central Sun? Uh, no, uh, when they went through different implantation process, through different uh, dark rituals, and through their lifestyles, their choices. Some of them have been disconnected gradually. Some of them have been disconnected through various experiments in the past. Okay, that's interesting because the soul is who we are. It, it retains its individual consciousness through lifetime. So they take over. The soul is disconnected. The soul is sitting like in some sort of prism, and, and it's actually used as an empty shell through a technology? I would say that uh, in the Cabal's cases, a part of the soul is projected in the body, and that part slowly or fast becomes disconnected and has independent life, which is controlled by the elementals, by the uh, spirit possession, by technologies and other things. Okay. Another question is, Egypt seemed to have had a nice revolution. It seemed like the light forces kind of took over there and have calmed the situation, have removed the cabal agents of the Muslim Brotherhood. They did not open their border to the people of Gaza to escape from the recent bombs of Israel. Uh, why didn't uh, you know a, a kind of an RM-backed positive Egyptian government uh, provide refuge for the Palestinians who wanted to escape? Okay, there is a certain tension between various groups uh, in Israel, and uh, I would say there was certain pressure for certain of those groups in Israel towards Egypt. Okay, thank you. Here's a question uh, for someone um, that says they've been listening to you, they followed you. You said to buy a home uh, would be a good place to put money. They bought a home. They put money in gold, which was a real valuable asset, and they were concerned to some prognosticators saying that the pole shift will happen in two years and that, you know, gold and, and um, is going to go down and other things. Uh, did the person who followed your advice, would you still say that they probably made a good choice to purchase a home? Of course, uh, number one, you need to listen to your own self and not to my advice. My advice is just a suggestion and my perspective. And yes, I still believe it's a good choice. 
Okay, do you have any information on the Brazilian leader that was killed? He seemed to be a positive guy, and uh, some of the Brazilians feel he was murdered. Is that correct? Uh, yes, unfortunately, the cabal removed that person. Okay, are there any uh, particular risks to iPhones from other cell phones? I would say they are basically all the same. There are many risks from the cell phones, from radiation to uh, surveillance. Uh, so uh, I would suggest do not use them if it's not necessary. So use them when you need them, but not more. Another multiple question when we had I wanted to get to was about the Hadron Collider. It's a Stargate. Is it being used by the Cabal? Um, is it going to come back online? Can you tell us anything other than what it's claimed to be as a scientific experiment. Can you tell me, I know they may be taking information and trying to develop negative things from it, but in and of itself, is it designed as a ley line disruptor, a weapon, a stargate? Is the location significant? Tell us about the Hadron Collider. Okay, I would just put it this way. In a way, there are good elements in that involved in its projects, but basically the Chimera group is misusing the whole thing. So uh, I cannot say much because this is classified at the moment. There are things going on there which need to be prevented and will be prevented. But there are some elements which are having plans which are not nice and they need to be stopped. Okay. What are the role of the Lyrians in the liberation process? Do you know about them? Can you tell us about this race? Okay. Um, I would say that race is not directly involved uh, in the forefront, but they are inspiring creativity in human beings. Okay. Do you have advice for star seeds at this time? Yes, I have. Uh, I would just uh, remind all the star seeds that they have come from uh, higher dimensions, from a greater reality, and uh, to connect with that greater reality as much as possible, to connect with their home, to connect with the stars, and bring as much as possible that reality here because this reality here needs that higher vibration and to connect with other star seeds, the other star people in a positive way. Okay, um, we have a uh, request from several people actually. Would like to hear your uh, comments, views, and ideas on dreams. Yes, but they need to be more specific than that. Tell us what are dreams. Actually, dreams are part of the daily cycle and as we have a part of our existence on the physical plane, Dreams are connecting uh, us with the astral plane. It's a way for us to process part of our emotions, which cannot be processed consciously. Dreams have a symbolic language which speaks to us. Actually, souls tries to speak to us through the symbolic language. But unfortunately, the archons and uh, with our technology have ability to disrupt our dreams and to influence what we dream of. So we have to be very aware the message of the dream is coming from. Is it coming from our higher self? Is it coming from processing our subconsciousness or is it coming from the arc of technology? Okay, another question. Um, I guess it's kind of related to the earth changes and stuff. I've been told that when we get very close to uh, a pole shift and things uh, shifting on the planet, that their electrical systems will not necessarily explode, but they will short circuit. Is this true, something that we could look forward to as a sign that there's some big changes taking place? Okay, uh, you don't have to be afraid uh, that the polar shift will happen uh, before the first contact. Nothing like that will happen before the first contact. Okay, good. Can you comment on the Schumann residence? Is it coming down or whatever? Can you comment on that? There has been a lot of claims about Schumann resonance, and actually uh, Schumann resonance, it's not just one frequency, it's a series of frequencies, which is actually describing the resonance frequencies of the ionosphere. And uh, it is not changing. It is simply that there are certain peak key frequencies that uh, excite the ionosphere. And this has been theoretically proposed by Dr. Schumann in the 50s and has been actually measured. Uh, much later, and uh, it is not connected directly with consciousness in the way people understand. But yes, there is a certain uh, one of the main of those frequencies is uh, resonant with the frequency of human heart. That's true, but this also has some cosmic meaning because there are other 
galactic resonant frequencies and uh, Schumann resonant frequencies are synchronized with galactic uh, frequencies on a certain level. Okay, here's something kind of out there for me, but several people have asked it. Um, there's been claims of 15 primary multidimensional control beings uh, and that they've been responsible for manipulating the grid on Earth for 54 million years. Can you come on in that? Is that anything you know about or is that nothing you've ever heard of? Uh, I heard about this story and I would say that the grids have been manipulated on Earth, but not for such a long time frame. And yes, there have been control beings and I just call them archons. Some people have some other names for them and uh, all this is going to be recycled very soon. All right. Would you say that the number 15 is accurate? I would say uh, it depends on uh, how you group those beings. It's not a linear distribution. Yeah, okay. You can just say there is a, one major group of 200 people. You can say it's a top group of 15 people. You can say it's a top group of 12 people. And it's all shifting. It's not a static thing. Here's a good question, and then we can make this the last one. How much progress has there been in disabling the Stranglet bombs and their associated Athletic Scalar weapons and the Shamira group? I would just say there has been progress. I will make a report about this uh, maybe in a week or two. Uh, but you see, uh, much intel about this it has to be classified because it's a very sensitive operation. It's This whole thing is much more dangerous than the nuclear bombs. And of course, uh, not much can be said about the actual operations themselves. This is the reason why there is not much intel out there in the last few months, uh, as these operations are under progress. Okay, Cobra, thank you so much. A wonderful interview. We got through a lot of questions. I appreciate your time today. And um, we'll do it again next month. Thank you very much, folks. Victory to the light. Yes, thank you, everybody, for listening. And yes, victory of the light.